My name is Lance Edminster, The Good News Voice. You can like us on the Facebook page of The Good News Voice. Subscribe to our YouTube channel called The Good News Voice. But before we start, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, we just want to thank you for Christ. So thankful that you loved us sinners the way we are and that you sent your beloved Son to the cross to die on the cross for our sins, past, present, future. Be buried and resurrect the third day, showing us the payment for sin is paid in full. And Father, we just pray that through some of these questions and answers that your name and your work can be glorified and maybe somebody can get saved. So Father, we just ask that you bless this message. In Christ's name, amen. So I received a great question from a young lady. Her question is two-part. What's happening to our nation? And why does everyone blame God? Anytime there's a high-profile incident, we have one group blaming God and another group saying, yes, it is God but you took them out of the schools, government, and the country. The question is, what is the answer? Let us try to shed some light on this subject. Today, you can't turn on the news without witnessing firsthand our nation is rotting from the inside out. To the outside world, the United States is still the place to come, the place of opportunity. However, if you lived in the United States for any time, you've witnessed horror, hate, infidelity, attacks on the institution of marriage, egregious acts on our children, like school shootings. If you were to ask someone the problem of these issues, there are many answers. However, most groups or individuals blame God for their problems. Today we live in a society that has no truth, and when there's no truth, everything becomes acceptable, and in this process, individuals become desensitized to sin. As a society, we are just like the times of Noah, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 6, 5. In the book of Matthew, the apostles asked Jesus, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Matthew 24, 3. Jesus answered, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, 37. We are living in the days of Noah. Because man is wicked in every thought and imagination in his heart. He wants to do evil continually. To answer part of the question, what's wrong with our nation and who is partially to blame? Man is part of the problem. Let's talk about the other problem. Many people like to blame God with a capital G. However, they need to blame God with a little g, which is Satan. In whom the God of this world who hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, our ourselves, and our ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who had commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4 through 6. So instead of blaming God, let us blame ourselves, and let us blame Satan, because Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The Bible says, The thief cometh not but to for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. John 10.10 10. There is also no truth in Satan. The Bible says, You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you'll do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and bowed not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. John 8, 44. See, man and Satan are the problem. And this goes way back even during the time when God delivered the nation Israel from under the slave master of Egypt. When the, when the Lord delivered Israel, he was very clear what they are to do and not to do. The Bible says, Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quit, break down their images. Exodus 23, 24. Another verse or verses to the nation of Israel from the Lord. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But you shall destroy their altars, break their images, cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go whoring 
after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go whoring after their gods, thou shalt make thee no molten gods. Exodus 34, 12 through 17. Another verse, And you shall not walk in the manners of the nations which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, You shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have, which have separated you from the people. Leviticus 20, 23-24 There's a recurring theme, and it is to worship no other God, because there is only one God, one way to heaven. Satan wants us to point fingers. Satan wants us to blame each other. However, the reality is, we don't fight against flesh and blood. Our enemy is Satan. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6, 11 through 12. Satan wants us to be distracted. He wants us to be desensitized to sin. He wants us to be tolerant to other religions and gods because this is his mission. He wants to hide the truth for all mankind. Remember earlier we read this verse? It says, In whom the God, little g, the God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 through 6. The reality is the United States is not in the Bible, and we know the United States will not last. However, the word of God shall last forever. The Bible says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Matthew 24, 35. Let me tell you something about Jesus Christ and how much he loves you. He's already died to meet you. And this is the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, past, present, future. He was buried and he resurrected the third day to show us pain for sins, paid in full. The Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory which I preached on you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. There's only one way to heaven, and it is believe in the finished, redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Titus 3, verse 5. Lord, Savior Jesus Christ was born for one reason, and that is to save us from our sins. Jesus Christ does not come to condemn individuals. Jesus Christ comes to save us because we are all hell doomed sinners without the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth, believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3, 16-18 The Bible is very clear. Jesus Christ does not come to condemn, for we are already condemned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 The Bible is very clear. The payment for sin is death. Somebody has to die for your sin. And this is why Jesus Christ came to this earth. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6.23 Let me ask you a very simple question. If you could be saved by being water baptized, doing good works, being a good person, or following the Ten Commandments. Why did God from eternity past, the God from eternity future, the ever presence, Jesus Christ, reveal himself in the flesh and die on the cross and resurrect the third day? 
The Bible says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Galatians 2, 21. If you could earn salvation by doing these things, then Jesus Christ died in vain. But we know Jesus Christ didn't die in vain. Jesus Christ can make a perfect sacrifice because he is the Lamb of God, and only the Lamb of God makes a perfect sacrifice for sin. The resurrection is proof that God the Father accepted Jesus Christ's death payment for sin, death payment of past sin, death payment of present sin, and death payment for future sin, all sin paid in full. The Bible is very clear. Jesus Christ comes to save us from a hell that we all deserve to a heaven we don't. People do not go to hell because they're bad. They go to hell because they believe not the gospel of Jesus Christ. They trust not in Jesus Christ as their Savior. They believe not that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins, burial, and resurrection. Know that God is gracious to you, and he's already died for all of your sins, past, present, and future. He was buried showing all the world he died for your sins, and he resurrected showing all the world that Jesus Christ fulfilled what the Father asked him to do. It is finished. I pray you receive belief. I pray you believe. Receive Jesus Christ right now for salvation. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins, burial, and resurrection. Let's get back to the question. What is wrong with our nation? Whom is to blame? We've answered whom is to blame. It is man and Satan. So if we know the root cause of the problem, what are we to do next? Do we sit around and continue to point fingers? That's exactly what Satan would want us to do. So what do we do? We can't control other people, but we can control and be responsible for our behaviors. Remember, it's a choice, and this is why grace is so important, because you can say no, which makes saying yes really important. Just like salvation, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, buried and resurrected for you, you can say yes to the gospel, the gospel of Christ. Believe that he died on the cross for sins, burial, and resurrection for you, or you can say no and go to hell for all eternity. It is your choice. After we believe, we are now a child of the King. For you are all child, children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.26 As a child of God, how are you going to act? Again, it's a choice. You can never lose your position as a child of God because once you believe in Jesus Christ alone for salvation, you can only be born again one time. Once you become a child of God, you're forever a child of God. Once saved, always saved. But as a child of God, what are you going to do? And here's a list of things you can do right now. Pray. Don't forget God and rejoice, rejoice in his work. As a child of God, I can pray for our leaders. I exhort, therefore, that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2, so I can pray for our leaders, pray for godly men to step up and lead our country. As a child of God, let me not forget about God. The Bible says, And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. When thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 12. See, God is easy to forget about when things are going well. Going well in your life. However, let us not forget about the Lord. As a child of God, I can offer up sacrifices of thanksgiving and rejoice in his work. The Bible says, and let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Psalm 107, verse 22. As a child of God, I should declare his work. As a child of God, I should declare his redemptive work with rejoicing. 
An example of this is when the Lord delivered Israel from Egypt. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation for my father's, my father's God, and I will exalt him. Exodus 15, verse 1 and 2. Let me declare his work with the rejoicing. And I say, I'm a sinner, and I can never make a perfect sacrifice, but Jesus Christ loved me. Loved me so much, he died for all of my sins, and he was buried for me, and he resurrected for me. He is my strength. He is my song. Let me declare his work with rejoicing. And he said, it is finished. The work is done, and the resurrection is proof the work is done. Let me declare his work with rejoicing. I believe, and I receive eternal life, knowing I will never, that I will forever go to heaven and never have the chance of going to hell not because of anything I did, but because everything he, Jesus Christ, did for me. Let us rejoice in his work. Let us declare his work with rejoicing. The Bible says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And now shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 14-17 Jesus Christ loves you so much. He died to meet you. He voluntarily went to the cross of Calvary. Died for all of your sins of past, present, future, buried and resurrected the third day, showing your sacrifice for sin is sufficient. It is sufficient. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior, what's stopping you right now from accepting Jesus Christ? Believe He died on the cross for your sins, burial, and resurrection. Trust in Christ Jesus as your Savior today. Today is the day of salvation. For He hath, I have heard thee, and time accepted. And in the day of salvation, I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So we've just heard what we can do. We know we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against Satan. We can pray. We can pray for our leaders. We need to not forget God. And you know what we need to do? We need to declare his work with rejoicing. Again, my name is Lance Edminster, the Good News Voice. You can like us on Facebook, the Good News Voice. Subscribe, subscribe to our channel, the Good News Voice. But before we close, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, again, we just want to thank you for Christ. Thankful that you sent your beloved Son to the cross and ultimately turning the cross into an altar, offering up a perfect sacrifice for sin, propitiation, a satisfied sacrifice, paying for all sin of past, present, and future, and then a testimony to the whole world showing that you died, you were buried, placed in a tomb for three days, and then triumphing over grave, over the sin, over death, and over Satan, resurrecting. And we know, Father, that Jesus Christ sits at your right hand today because the work is done. And maybe somebody out there today is like, you know what, that makes sense. I know I can never be good enough. But you know what, today, I believe that. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, was buried, and he resurrected for me. That person right now can be like, Father, thank you for, they've just received eternal life. They just were born again and became a child of God forever. And Father, as your children, we pray that you'd put it on our hearts, that we would pray every single day, that we would pray continuously, as it says in Thessalonians, pray for our leaders, pray for ourselves, pray for our neighbors, pray for our enemies, pray for our hedge of protection around our kids. We also pray that we would let us not forget you, that we would keep our minds on the eternal things of God and not on the external things of this world. And lastly, we pray that we would rejoice in your work. We're sinners. We don't deserve anything. But it is by your grace and your love and your mercy that you sent your beloved son to the cross and you freely give us this life, life more abundantly. And we know all blessings are received in Christ. So Father, we just ask that you bless this message. In Christ's name, amen.